Welcome back to YouTube once again. Project No Rice, I think this is number 12. Uh, last time we did the turbo and stuff and figured out that we might have to move the radiator. This time we have a different plan and uh, you'll see how everything fits together. But we're not dicking with the turbo this episode. We're going to do Moroso oil pan, Moroso oil pickup, uh, gauge, uh, catch can, all kinds of stuff. So have fun. And we're going to take off the bumper to get the intercooler fit. So there's a 10 here, 10 here. Then we got these Phillips deals all the way around. And then a 10 and a 10 on this side. You have one, looks like a 10 millimeter on each side. On the bottom, right there. And on that side. We bought this J-Line um, intercooler. And uh, it should be just thin enough to fit, but the widest and the tallest one that we could get um, for Mishimoto. I think it'll work out good, so let's test it out. Obviously, we're putting the intercooler in front right here. Um, so there's a couple things we need to destroy or get rid of. That little clip right there. Uh, we need to move the horn. That's the horn. So we got to move that out of the way because the intercooler piping is going to wrap around on both sides. So we're taking out the inner wheel wells. That way when the guy goes to do the piping, he has nothing in his way. And then I relocated the horn to that spot. There was already a 10 millimeters bracket of some sort to hold probably the factory air box or something. So we put it there instead of out in front. We started the front intercooler by putting a piece of tape in the middle, marking the middle, marking the middle, middle of the intercooler. And then we held it up, lined the back of the intercooler up with the back of this bumper support. Um, then marked the center line of the nuts. Then we marked the depth of the nuts. And then uh, I drilled two holes on the outside. Right now we're test fitting that. Uh, as long as the two outside ones work, then we're going to sort of halfway mount it and then uh, mark the center one because we're not going to have any brackets on the bottom. So we're going to use all three top ones. And uh, we'll see how it looks. So it looks pretty flush on the back side. The front side is pushed in very little, but it's nice and even with the bumper bar. And there it goes. Here's the LSV Tech part number. So if you have an LSV Tech, this, if you have a girdle, you got to use this one, which is the V Tech one. If you don't have a girdle, then you use the LS one. So we're in the process of removing the factory oil pan. Then we have this Moroso oil pan and the Moroso pickup that we're going to install. Came with a stud kit. And uh, what's nice about this is it has the turbo oil drain right there. So it'll work out nicely. There's the pickup installed now. It's all good. We used the uh, 8.8 .8 and 10.9 or whatever from Ace. This is the not stainless, but it's coated so it doesn't rust. I mean, it's in the oil here, but we just bought the same stuff for everywhere. So I think it looks good. Now we're going to get the oil pan put back on. We got the new studs in all the way around. And uh, so, yeah, let's get this thing put back together. I just got finished cussing. Um, to get this oil pan on with the correct pickup, you have to remove the axle here and don't put all your studs in. The stud kit for the oil pan, only put like one or two in. Um, maybe the back ones, uh, that would be about all the ones I would put in underneath here. Put those and one on this side, that way when you put, you can get it up easier and uh, but yeah you need to twist it to where this side of the oil pan is facing more back and then the, pad, this other side 
is facing forward, you get the pickup in the hole, and then you twist and push up at the same time. Uh, and then you'll get it on. But son of a biatch. Also with this oil pan, this is the clutch cover. Uh, the ends used to stick out far. You need to cut that the same distance all the way across. So I just used a blending disc, sandpaper flapper disc, whatever you guys want to call it. And I trimmed it down to where it's flush, or well, not flush, but it's even amount as the middle all the way up and down. I can already hear the haters. I'm waiting for the shit in the comments. I'm waiting. Go ahead. Talk, talk shit down below. Alright, anyways, this is what's going to happen. We've tried a couple different combinations now, and it seems like this is going to be the best combination. Um, so the oil, the hot oil is going to come out of the engine, hit the Mishimoto oil cooler plate. From that plate, it's going to go out to the cooler, right? Then it'll go through the cooler, back in the Mishimoto plate. Then it'll go out. It'll go up into the Golden Eagle plate, um, because... If I use this plug here, it's going to be too small and not enough oil, um, not PSI, but um, oil flow. So not enough CFM of water, right? So this one has a bigger port, and it's, and it's all set up underneath uh, with the uh, oil channels to get the, uh, current, the correct amount of flow. The reason I'm doing it this way is to get everything to plug in. And um, the oil going to the VTEC and all that will be already through the cooler, so it should be the temperature should be lower. All right. So then, the, whatever wants to go to VTEC will go to VTEC, and then the rest of the oil will go through the filter and go back into the engine clean. Got the oil cooler mounted now. I just got some uh, one-inch wide aluminum. Bent it up in the vise, two on the top, two on the bottom, and the bottom ones are farther in so that the inner cooler will clear. And then uh, we marked the hoses to get cut and put 90 degrees. This is a universal kit, so it came with straights, but we have to put 90s on. The oil lines are going to run on this side of the car because the exhaust and everything is going to run that way. So it's going to go to the sandwich plate back there, come across, go into the cooler. We changed up the power steering reservoir to a Mishimoto. We first did cardboard, then uh, this was our first template here. And uh, as you can see here, the holes were a little too far apart, so, but on this one, it looks clean now and we shrunk it down a little bit so comes out up and over with the stock hose into the pump and then where it comes back I use the factory lines got rid of the second hard factory line put an adapter and then that goes into the other side I think it looks pretty good. So now that that one's pretty much done, we're going to take off the plate, unscrew everything, leave the power steering reservoir there, and then paint, prime and paint the uh, plate. And now we're going to do the catch can plate to go along with this. Here's what the hoses look like under the plate. So everything clears the pulleys and we use as much stock stuff as possible. Boom! Catch cam bracket done. Look at it. Doesn't that shit look slick? See? Told you it's done. So the hose is going to magically go through there like David Copperfield and connect to the valve cover. So that's the in port on the catch can. And then the out port is going to wrap around and go to the turbo inlet. Um, so yeah, now I'm going to mark this up and uh, do a little more hacking. Boom. 
first template is done, got it to where it goes from the valve cover straight in. Obviously this is too long. Um, but yeah, it'll go straight in. Uh, the hardware is too long. We're going to have to cut that. This metal is too flimsy. So we have thicker metal somewhere over there that we're going to use. So let me build the final product and let you take a look. Alright, the strong one is done. The strong one is done. So, bolt it on there. This bracket from Mishimoto is a little weak, but um, it works just fine. Once we put the hoses on, it'll stiffen it up too because it's going to want to hold it to the valve cover. And then this one's going to go across the distributor into the, to the intake over there. So, in to it from the valve cover, out to the intake pipe. Here's the boost gauge we're running. It's the AEM. And we're running the AEM um, boost controller that we're going to wire to the ECU. And then we can control boost based on RPM or whatever to get better traction because these Hondas, if you give them boost early, they just shred the tires off because uh, unless you go a wide body front end, there's no real way to put some meat under the front. Here's the sensor for the AEM boost gauge, and that is referencing to the back port on the intake manifold. And then the wires go through the firewall and then go to the gauge. Here's the gauge installed. We're only going to have these two gauges um, in the ring bezel. Nothing else since we're trying to keep it as stock looking as possible. We're using this AEM boost solenoid to control our boost electronically with the ECU. And set up for the wastegate version. So one of those goes to the uh, boost pipe, the pressure pipe out of the compressor and one of them goes to the wastegate and then the wires here they go all the way we didn't finish wiring yet but they're gonna go through the wall into the ECU I think we're gonna mount the coolant overflow somewhere right about there or he can find a mount somewhere in here. We're going to have to see. That's not the permanent spot for sure, though. So we're going to have to figure that out, or the fab guy can figure it out. So it looks like we got some decent progress done. So catch can mounted. Power steering mounted. We need to figure out a filter option or make a 90-degree pipe uh, with a filter pointed down or something. Uh, because there's only like two inches there, so I don't know how this is going to work. We're going to talk to a fab guy about that. The radiator's got to get scooted over. Downpipe's going to go over here, down there. Wastegate's going to go straight down, back into the downpipe. When the downpipe goes down and around. And uh, so it's coming along. Should be towing this to the fab shop soon. So, got the oil cooler, inner cooler. Um, so now it's a bunch of piping, really. Then we can put the battery back in, turn it on, get the base tune in, and uh, see what happens. Since we have the injectors in, AEM fuel regulator, fuel rail, gauge, RC, uh, what are they, 750s? Yep. RC 750 injectors. Um, so I think we're ready to go as soon as we get this piping. So, till next time, wrench on.